just finished building their perch or roost. Four dolls and a couple of two by fours. It's not exactly perfectly level. They may they may lay lopsided eggs, I don't know. But within minutes of putting it up, I came back out to check on something and uh, the little chicken here who is named Martha was up exploring it. She was up walking around on the first rung, so I guess they've already got the idea of what it might be for. Now I'll have to keep watching in the evening to see how much longer before they decide to sleep on a perch. I have a small problem with my very secure yard that I finished yesterday. The bantams are still small enough that they can squeeze out through the, the fence. There goes one up to have a look at things. I caught one of the bantams outside when I went around to shoe her. She came right back in through the same hole, so I don't know. Hopefully nothing will happen to them until they're old enough and big enough that they don't fit through the holes. The standard size breeds are already big enough that they don't fit in the hole. But the little bantams, if they're a mine too, can run out through any time. Well, I guess the perch is being accepted. Well, we've moved up to rung two. <laughs> A little while ago, the white one, Matilda, was all snuggled up on their scooch down, resting on the perch, so I think they're glad to have the perch. It's been another day of first for the girls in the chicken coop. That's the plant cam. Today is the chicken cam. It's been set up all day today for 12 hours before I take it down. It's taking a 10 second video clip every 30 minutes so we have CCTV for the chicken coop still using this sheet of partial sheet of plywood because I haven't installed their chicken door yet but there's another a number of new things happening inside the new large suspension feeder arrived and the new three gallon water fountain that's also electric, thermostatically controlled for, for winter. Won't need it for a while for that yet, but anyway, I put that on a pallet to uh, keep it up out of the bedding so they wouldn't get their water quite so dirty. And it's just temporarily sitting on that small piece of plywood. The large piece of plywood that I'm using for a ramp for them will be cut up and used to uh, cover the pallet. As soon as I get their door enclosed and the uh, feeder is only hanging in a temporary location as well it's going to go over where the brooder lamp is right now I don't think we're going to need the brooder lamp for much longer sometime in the next week or so I think I'll probably take it down and that's where the feeder will go and all day today they have been sitting up various times, three or four of them at a time, roosting on their new roost, so they figured that out. I'm curious to see if anybody will sleep on it tonight. Sort of an aerial view of a second story window here of the latest addition to the coop. I was in uh, True Value Hardware yesterday in Machias and they were having a sale on tarps, usually $10 for $5, so I bought one. It cleverly matches the color of the roof. And I've put it over the first six feet of the enclosed yard. While I was installing it yesterday afternoon, we had a rain shower. I hadn't thought about it being a rain shield, but also on rainy days, I guess, it makes it so the chickens can come out and scratch around without getting wet. But my main reason for putting it there is uh, for some shade. Not that we've had any great amount of sun so far this summer, but on hot, sunny days... It gets quite warm inside the coop, so this will shade the windows in the front and also give them a bit of a shaded yard that they can come out and scratch around in without getting into the direct sunlight. I'll have to remember to take that off before winter arrives because that would hold up a lot of snow and 
possibly the weight from the snow would break the roof down there. So it's just a summer thing, I guess. Only stapled in place and only cost five dollars. So if it should tear when it's being removed, it really won't make that much difference. As dark as it is right now, you'd think the sun was about to set. It's only 5.30 in the afternoon, but I've been hearing thunder off in the distance and uh, getting a bit of a shower. I'm getting wet as I film this, but my new solar charger for the electric fencing that I'm going to put around the chickens arrived today. And the instructions said it has to set out in the sun for five days before you use it. Well, I may have to send this thing to Australia to get it charged then. I don't know what's going to happen here, but we five days of sun we haven't had since the 1st of April. Now let me show you what else I've been doing today. just finished making a low-tech installation of a, I guess what's meant to be a high-tech chicken door. I bought it from one of these companies that sells the automatic chicken door openers, electric that works off of either an electric eye that opens when the sun comes up or a timer. I, even if I could afford the three or four hundred dollars that they want for it, I think that's absolutely silly. Uh, I wouldn't want it opening automatically. I, uh, we have so many windy, cold, rainy days, I wouldn't want the door opening up on them at sunrise. I, I'll decide when the door is going to be open. But what I have done, I have put it on its tracks, obviously as you can see, chopped a hole in the building, and uh, I attached a wire to it and a couple of screw eyes, and that brings the wire out through the fence. And here I've put a toggle on the end of a wire, and all I have to do to close it and then I can fasten the toggle back on the fence somewhere else until I'm ready to open it again. But it opens and closes very easily and I can do it uh, without going inside the yard. So I can come out in the morning and open this up. And they learned how to use this thing instantly. I think they've been waiting for me to install one. Just as soon as I closed the door so they couldn't use the big door, they started using the small opening. Here's all the girls lined up here. They're under the part of the yard that has the tarp because as you can hear maybe the rain hitting the tarp I'm the fool outside standing in the rain the chickens all had sense enough to go in out of the rain I also shortened up that pallet that was inside and uh, covered it with plywood so it doesn't take up quite as much space but it, it's a good four inches maybe a little more off the ground and that keeps the bedding from getting in their water. I'm even going to try going away for overnight, leaving Sunday, coming back Monday, now that I have the large water fountain and the large feeder closed up inside the coop this time of year. They should be fine for 24 hours or so without me. Anyway, thank you for watching. I didn't get the camera turned on time enough to see what just happened, but if you can see the little barred rock banty in between that large barred rock and Ginger, the Rhode Island Red, she was snuggled up underneath of Ginger to get warm, and Ginger was just like a mother hen. She was tucking her in and keeping her all cuddled up and warm. It is the smallest banty in the bunch. I don't know if it's always going to be so much smaller or not, but it, it's been late getting its feathers, and it's uh, really only about half the size of the other bantams. So. Anyway, Ginger has turned into a mother already. Another shot out a window. We're in the middle of a heavy downpour of rain. And I've just discovered the chickens don't even bother to go inside. They go under the end of the yard that has the tarp and hunker down. They're just still sitting there listening to the rain beating on the tarp, I guess. <laughs>